Doodle bud. Wow. Uh, when I did my engineering chat about the Lamy 2000, I just did it because I thought, you know, I'd just chat. But you guys really seem to like that. So I actually held back on the level of detail I went on the engineering side of this pen. Some of the parts and features. There's uh, more levels. Like, I'm talking microscopic. We can't even see it with the loop. So I thought, well, let's let's do part two. You guys like it? Let's. There's even some more gems I found in this pen. So I'm gonna talk about those. But also, people are asking, why not this pen or why not that pen? What pens did you pick from? I'll spend a couple minutes on that as well. Okay. So first, seeing that uh, the Lamy again, this is my opinion. My you take it for whatever you feel it's worth. Saying the the Lamy 2000 is the best engineered pen is different from what you think is your favorite pen or writes the best. Like my personal favorite is this guy. It's a gorgeous pen. Yeah, it's expensive and you get to flash that off to folks and you got the big nib ink window. I got green and ink in there right now. That looks cool. But uh, the the engineering, the manufacturing behind it doesn't really blow my mind. It's done very well. A lot of it's hidden. You need specialty tools to take the nib out and the piston filler out. Um, you know, uh, you can't see it in there, but there's like a little custom screw. Custom, that's cool, but to hold the, that on. But nothing crazy. Um, there's many well-built pens. This Pelican's very well-built. It's beautiful as well, but that's not the same as the engineering eyeball that I'm looking at things through. So it's done very well. Like, I don't have any complaints with this. The piston mechanism as well it's all really good great pen it's expensive too but one little thing i noticed other than it looking great is when you put the cap on if we can get you close and maybe let me zoom a touch whoa everything's jiggling there's little micro scratches if we get the light just right okay i had a problem with the camera for a second there but when you unscrew the cap See, there's some of these little fine, fine micro scratches just from it wiggling here a little bit. And also, one thing I noticed is when you cap it, get it, you know, snug, you can come back to this pen a day or two later, and it's a little loose. It's not quite where you had it. And the vintage one does it too. So again, beautiful pen. It's been around forever. This is kind of currently my favorite pen to write with. From the engineering side, it just, it's, you know, it's well made, but it's no mind blowing processes going on here. And it has that same little thing. I find this one's even more so when you leave it, sometimes the cap will be a little bit loose. Surely the Parker 51. Yeah, the, you know, again, all the pens I considered were all the ones you saw at the start of my other video and, and more. It's very well made. It's got a nice little system for the cap clutch mechanism. It's good. Um, but. Also, it, it scratches the back of the pen a little bit. Another thing, if you put the pen in, you cap it. Okay, great. You can unscrew the pen. Ah, uh, you know, a little bit of a flaw. And also, like I showed you on the Lamy, when you cap it because it's got those tabs, whereas the Lamy, it's got those little tabs in that design I showed you. You, you can push as hard as you want. Doesn't over, doesn't go too deep. It doesn't get jammed. This guy, you put it in, you push, you can keep going, and now this, it's in there tight. Ugh, you can, oh, oh, I went hard, hold on. Okay, that, you can, you can get it way too tight, okay? Little things like that. What about cheap pens? You get a lot of pen for a little money with this guy, the Jinhao 51A. I agree, and it writes well for the whatever, the six, eight dollars or less you pay for it. It's a great pen for that price range, but being, you know, what's the best pen for $10? That's not what this is about. It's the engineering behind it. And this is all kind of basic stuff, stamped out parts. Well, let's get the flash on. You know, they got a screw to hold the finial and they can't even go for the stainless. So that's rusted to hell. Standard cartridge converter pen. And it works great. But from the engineering side, yeah, we're ripping off some of the metal because we got i mean some of the plastic here because we got metal teeth so is it the best engineered pen certainly not this guy's great um this has some good quality design to it 
Very well made. Beautiful finishing. The knurling on here, I loved it. Gorgeous pin. But little things. You know, the clip is just a, a piece of stamped out met, uh, sheet metal there. Nothing crazy. This clip has some little teeth on it. If you can see. Oh, we're kind of marking up the finish a little bit. The anodizing, those teeth do leave a little bit of a mark. And, you know, I'll put a link to my other video. There's this little issue that when you cap it and turn it, I don't know if you can probably, you probably can't even hear it because it's so minor, but I did a video and a viewer asked me a question about it, that this wiggles a little bit. What happens is the shoulders here touch the cap liner and cause this clip to wiggle and make a tiny click noise. Little things like that, but this is a great, wonderfully made pin. This guy's awesome too. You know, it's a slip on cap. Doesn't have the ears. Some people complain about the little dog ears there in the Lammy. So what this uses is this little ridge here secures it in the cap. Let's turn the flash on. And you can see down in there, there's a couple little detents. I believe there's three of them, which is the correct number you should be using. It's <laughs> three. And uh, those catch. So it's sort of like a springy system where this goes over top. You feel the pressure build. That little divot's almost there, and that holds it on there. Very simple and effective. But there's a, not a lot of engineering in behind it, because I'm going to show you some stuff that's going to blow your mind on the Lamy. We're going to go really deep. A couple more real quick, then we'll get on to it. Another Lamy, the Dialog 3. This thing's slick, people. It's got that retractable nib mechanism. Really great. Now, this is done really well, but there's a couple little minor flaws with it. Not as good as the Lamy from that engineering side. Now, people were talking about the 823. I agree with you. This is a wonderfully made pen. It is done spectacular. But it's pretty simple. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing crazy going on with this stuff. Now, that doesn't mean you know more engineering is better. But when you do it and you get it right, it is phenomenal. So, you know, they got some smart stuff on here. They got these, uh, oh, the focus. There we go. Okay. Little notches to help you make sure the, the nib fits in the feed perfectly. That's an awesome feature of the pen. Not like a crazy hard thing to do from the engineering standpoint. This is the body here. It's just a tube. It's just an injection molded tube. Pretty easy to do that. Um, Another thing, you know, these parts here, yeah, they're threaded. There's some bores and stuff like that. This is a stainless steel rod. It's got a little machining here. And there's a cool screw with a custom tool you need that's retaining this whole thing together. It's neat, but it's nothing crazy. And another thing, too, another note I wanted to make is to take this guy fully apart, you need special tools. The Lame 2000... We're going to take this even further apart. You don't need any tools for this thing, which is crazy. When you release your product into the wild, you get all sorts of different people touching it. And when you're going to let them be able to take this whole thing apart just by hand, there's a lot of crazy stuff that can happen. And then, you know, is it going to go back together properly? And it does. You don't even need special tools. That's why, you know, a lot of people complain about some of the German stuff, like with BMW, and I, I, I get you, and how to get to things, and how to change things, or you need specialty tools. Yeah, it's, it is to keep the revenue in the company. You go through all this work to make this thing, and, uh, you know, you want them to come back, and <laughs> spend more money with you. I, I get it. But this guy here, you know, someone was asking about the piston neck me mechanism. I'll take it off. That's fine. We'll do it. You just keep, makes these noises. Okay, you might be alarmed. It's okay. And uh, it comes apart. There's a little sleeve in here with a nut. So this is essentially like a nut, but it's kind of shaped like a sleeve. Nothing too crazy in this part. This is not mind-blowing. It's Again, things are keyed. So you can see that little key there. I don't know if you can see it. Ugh. One day. There we go. You can see the key on there, which goes into this part nicely. There's a key in there as well. Um, and then the pit, it comes with its own piston pusher outer, that top part of the feed. You put it in there, out comes your, the piston rod assembly here. So you slide her out. Oh, the focus. 
focus. Come on, guys. There we go. Okay. So now we got, this is another sleeve that goes over top. So this is guiding. This is a, a piston guide. So this slides up and this holds it in place. Okay. And then you got the nut here on the back. And of course it slides inside of this. So it, it fits in there no problem. So nothing too crazy. Like someone thought that'd be super interesting. I guess it is. Um, these parts are not that crazy hard to make they're just injected molded plastic there's a lot of parts that get made like that but we're <laughs> we're gonna go back to this guy again and also this part here we'll talk a little bit more oh and the pen clip as well okay so on to the section that we can call it the cone it actually kind of reminds me of say the, the front of the condor plane um anyway so this is injection molded metal what yeah, they're not messing around here, man. So that you, that there's powdered metal, gets mixed with a binding agent, turned into little pellets. You can look this up on YouTube. I'm not going to give you the whole process. Then it gets heated up and injected and molded. And uh, then you got your parts and there's a, a sintering process. Like the, you also have to get re all the uh, binder that's removed. The parts shrink. So you got to take that into design consideration. But this is all done in one shot. The, that might be the part of the mark there. That, that's one that's down in there without really getting in there. But see that keyway that goes the whole length of the part? You, that's from the injection mold, and you can't do that otherwise. I believe this is all part of it, too. This is all done in one shot, this flat surface. And potentially even the hole. I don't know. I don't know if, if uh, that's drilled afterwards or how much further this goes out, and they cut it off here. We're going to get up close and personal with that part, but they're using injection molded metal to do this. When you're behind the design table and you're thinking about how to make parts and you're calling out inject metal injection, metal <laughs> injection molding, you're not messing around. Same thing with the clip. This is injection molded metal as well. Here's the giveaway. Can we see? It says Germany under there, but there's that little dot. Hold on one second. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but so it says Germany down in there. That little round dot right there, I believe that is the mark from the injection molding that they do. And also to this flat part, so when it gets injection molded, it needs to sit flat. So here's a nice, perfect flat surface for when this thing gets molded, boom, gets put onto the flat surface to go into the ovens to do its thing. And also this too, I'm... You can get pretty small minimum part features on a pen, and I have a feeling that uh, we'll maybe see if we can look that under the microscope as well, if this is actually injection molded into it as well, all in one shot. Whew. There's a lot going on with this. I thought this might have been extruded at first. So essentially, it's like when you have like a U-channel, it just gets... Let me zoom out here, folks. Oop. It just gets pulled through an extruder and there's a die to form that shape. This would be a good part for that. So you could just have this profile that comes off and then you just chop them into smaller pieces and away you go. But as you can see, it's tapered as well. So it's wider here, narrower there. You'd have to angle cut it to do that. And But this was sort of the, the giveaway to me is that little dot. So I can see it better there. That little dot. There we go. That little dot right there. That's from the injection molding. And to top it off, they throw their country on there. Germany. I don't know why there's two. But uh, just be like, hey, look, we're injection molding parts over here for your fountain pens. Love it. Okay, so back to this ring. Now, this one's fairly simple. This is just stamped out. So just a, a punch drawing is made to give you this exact shape. And there's sort of like a die set up. And there's, of course, there's part numbers and designs and everything and uh, revisions. But there's a punch set that gets made for this. And since they're making their own nibs, right, they're punching things. They're punching nibs, steel, and everything else too. So there's dies and all that stuff for these nibs. Well, it's just guessing they probably use the same punch machines to stamp these guys out, which is pretty cool. Okay, but there's a little feature here. I was looking at this a little bit closer. Now, my eyes could be messed up, but it looks like 
the center of these tabs isn't quite along the center line of this circle. And let me give you a little drawing to explain why. Okay, I apologize for the crappy drawing ahead of time. This is kind of why you should use a pencil. I'm smudging, I was trying to draw around something. Of course, fountain pens, they smudge, they skip, they smear. <laughs> Anyways, so what I'm trying to show here is, so this is, there's a center line to this part. So I sort of drew it terribly. So the center line, if these tabs were centered, these tabs would be up a little bit more, but they're down a bit. And also this is, this is exaggerating this effect. But if, if they're down a bit, these are going to be off at an angle. The reason this is just a smidge below the center line is when you squeeze it. So when it's first entering the cap and it compresses it, it brings these together. It squishes the tabs together. And now the edges of the tabs that are right here will be square to that center line and on center. That is an insane detail. We're almost done with this part, but another note I was going to show you with the microscope is the finish. The finish looks very similar to the other parts, and I'll talk to you about how they did that. So here we are zoomed in on the part to get that finish. What I believe they used is something called a vibratory finisher. So these things just get stamped out, pachunk, 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 probably into a big bucket. They chuck them in the vibratory finisher, which is kind of like a rock tumbler, but this is much better. There's some little abrasive media that gets put in there. This is most likely ceramic. It deburs the part and also gives it that nice uniform finish that's on there, which also coincidentally kind of matches the finish on the other metal parts. Fantastic job. It's like I was mentioning, when you let people take your precious thing you designed apart and have access to everything, and no tools and everything comes apart and goes back together again properly it is quite amazing like there's everything self-aligned and it goes to the right depth everything just slips on that takes a lot of design consideration to have everything go together perfectly every time without any special tools or jigs or anything like that let's show you the piston mechanism so Where's the cap? There it is. So it's keyed. So this only goes in one way. There you go. It's going to go the way it wants to go. Slip it into there. Now this isn't something I recommend you take the piston in and out all the time. Um, to me, there's probably a little bit of extra wear and tear doing that. But uh, then you just put it back in. Screw it in. Your piston's working. Like it's fantastic. You can see it going up and down there. All right, let's finish this off and I'm going to show you one last detail. And we'll call this done. I think this is as deep as we will go. Whoop, there we go. Let's get it lined up. There we go. Let me double check this here. Had a little chunk of Kleenex in there from when I was cleaning it. So again, just slides in, it's keyed, goes nice and easy. That's the thing. If it didn't feel quite right, you stop and you take a look at it. Put in the ring. This always takes a second to pick up. Quick tip, if you're having trouble picking that little ring up, it is magnetic. So that's handy. All right. Put it back together. And we're done. It's pretty amazing. We fully stripped that pen. And uh, no tools required. There you go. Do you got to know what you're doing? Yeah. But that's phenomenal design consideration. The very last thing I'm going to show you. Check this out. Okay. This little angle on the bottom of the section goes with the design. But why is it there? I can't say for certain, but check this out. If you roll the pen, rest it on that flat spot, that is precisely the angle that the nib touches the paper <laughs> so some pens here let me show you another one so the Mont Blanc 149 some pens when you tip them down what hits first is the feed and it can leave a mark on the page Pelican 800 series feed touches just before Visconti Homo Sapien 
feed touches just before close, but they did taper it, but it just hits before. Parker 51, yeah, it clears. So when it first engages, the feed isn't going to touch the page. So after all that, the first video, now video two. I think we looked at everything. The finish on the material, how it matches with this, just all the things I showed you. Um, why, when I put my engineering eyes on and look at things, and that's what I do. Anytime I get anything in my hand, I look at it. How is it built? Where are the problems? How are the threads? Is the spring tension correct? And just everything. This one, every box is checked. No stone is left unturned. I get thoroughly impressed with this. And that's why I say this is the best engineered pen. It may not be your favorite. It's not my favorite. I have other ones I like more and all that stuff. That's fine. You might say, well, that's too expensive. For seven bucks, I got one hell of a pen. I, I know. But the engineering on this is nothing compared to this. The thought and consideration and no, ex no angle wasn't looked at with every single part of this pen. So that, we beat the hell out of that horse, that dead horse. Um, there you have it, folks. Hope that helped you out. Thanks again for watching. I love the comments and people who are subscribing and liking and disliking and calling me whatever you want to call me on my comments. I don't care. But I like the engagement. It's fun. Those are my thoughts. We'll stick around for some more. Catch you next time.